Welcome back to Outdoors with the Morgans. We're going to start things off by doing a little maintenance on the mini skid. First thing we're going to do, we're going to check the uh, track adjustment. I'm going to pull it ahead a little bit on the trailer and we'll do that right on the trailer. To uh, check the track adjustment, we'll use this right here. All you do, you stick this in here, all the way to the front. It is just a tiny bit out of adjustment. There's a plate right here. I don't know if you can see that. This is the amount of wiggle room that it calls for. So yeah, we need to tighten it up just a hair. If it falls, this plate right here, if it falls anywhere in between here, you're good. Take this bolt out first, maybe. This is just a uh, keeper. You'll see here in a second. That just keeps this from uh, turning, as you can see. Can't tell which way I'm supposed to turn it yet. That's it. That is well within the adjustment range. Handy little tool here. I guess you could just measure it as well, but this makes it a lot easier. We'll go check the other side. That one's pretty good. You know, I'm wondering if that's why I had that occasional squeak that was driving me nuts. We'll find out here in a second. We'll make sure we put this back because you know how that goes. Nope, still squeaks. I want to try something with this uh, trailer. I've been wanting to know. But I wanted to see if I could put the four-wheeler on here with the mini skid. I mentioned before, you know, the only downside to the tilt deck over the hydraulic tail is fitting two pieces of equipment on it, whether it be a four-wheeler and the mini skid or a mini skid in the tractor or whatever. But I'm just trying to figure this out. This is not going to work, but I have an idea. Let me show you what the problem is here. Man, is that close, isn't it? But it's going to go up here. You know what? It might work. I think it's going to work. I didn't think it would. It just brushed the tires. And this 
It's sitting on the ground. Boy, it doesn't get any closer than that, does it? What I was thinking, what I could have done was back it on. I think I'd have more clearance. But this is gonna be this will work. This will be fine. That is crazy. I mean, like I said, it just brushes the tire. Comes right up here to the rear bumper, but it ends right about here, and the tail of the trailer is on the ground. It's like they made this trailer for a sportsman's 850 and a mini skid. Up front here, ironically, the winch plate on the trailer was just about to hit the winch on the four wheeler, but you know, what I could do is back it on. I think I would have more clearance. Yeah, if you look at where that winch is on the four-wheeler versus this back bumper, yeah, I'll try that next time. But this will work. This will work the way I got it. Alright, I believe that is much better. Backing it on. Let's see if it'll uh let's see what it does here. Oh yeah, we got all the room in the world now. Yep. Beautiful. I'll say one thing about this uh, mini skid. It's 40 horsepower and it likes to fuel. It does. I mean, the tanks aren't real big. There's one on each side. I'll have to try to figure it out, like, you know, in eight hours, how much fuel it uses. But uh, I put fuel in it quite often, especially when you're running like the brush cutter on it or the power rake.
right, so this afternoon I sawed some more of that red pine. I just brought it up here and got it stacked and stickered. But I tell you what, after that trip to uh, Michigan and seeing how those guys at uh, Cummins Lumber crank this stuff out makes me feel incredibly slow. It really does. But there's a lot more of them and they've got a lot bigger operations, so I guess I can live with it. But man, they could go. They really could. Also got the mini skid, the four wheeler, and the brush cutter on the trailer because first thing tomorrow morning, I'm headed back down to the cabin. I'm gonna put some more of that tongue and groove pine up. And then when I wanna take a break from that, I'll mow some trails. And then when I wanna take a break from that, I'll go for a ride on the four wheeler. And then I'll get back to putting up the tongue and groove pine. But anyway, I think that's about it for now. I'll report back from the road in the morning and uh, I'm gonna stay at least one night down there, maybe two. We'll have to see how things go. But I should get quite a bit done and it should be a pretty good time. And uh, we'll just have to see how it goes, but I'll bring you along. I just made it to the cabin and I just saw six or seven deer right over here behind the Shire house but it's pretty chilly today uh, it's only about 50 degrees right now but I'm gonna get unloaded and I think I'm just gonna drop the trailer and then I'll get started working on some of this tongue and groove it was an uneventful trip on the way down which is a good thing uh, I think what I'll do once I get unloaded I'm gonna put the trailer over there in the circle drive uh, tonight i may head into town get a bite to eat or something we'll have to see how it goes boy that is close look at that Perfect. All right, got all unloaded, put the trailer away. Uh, before I get started, I wanna show you something on this Super Duty that kinda threw me for a loop this morning. I was all loaded up, ready to go, had the trailer on, the whole bed's full of stuff, back seat, everything I was gonna need, and I couldn't get the truck out of park. I'll show you what I mean. You get in, start the truck up, foot is on the brake, wouldn't come out of park. Now, I didn't see this, and that goes away real quick. Did you see that message that popped up? I'll show you. You have to step on the brake. It says bed outlet cover open. Message goes away again. I didn't see it. I probably should have been paying more attention. Bed outlet cover open, secure plugged in equipment, press OK to shift out of park. So you press OK. But like I said, the message will go away. So you have to hit it while the message is up, and then it'll come out of park. The reason it did that is this. This Ford has that pro onboard generator. There's 2,000 watts in the bed right there. So I figured 
I would charge up my Jackery on the way down. Well, just because that covers up and, you know, they're new. It knew there was something plugged in. It wanted me to make sure my load was secured before it would allow me to take it out of park, which that's fine. That's just, I don't care. But imagine in like, say, 10 years, what an electrical nightmare these trucks will be. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't know what the answer is either. If you trade every three or four years, I did get the extended warranty on this truck. And so far, it's been fine. But like I said, the screen has been a little bit glitchy, which isn't a big deal. However, if it gets to the point where it doesn't allow you to get the truck out of park, that's going to be a big problem. Now, this is the first time in a long time. I'm not the only one making noise down here. Uh, the neighbors, if you go out of our driveway, hang a left, go down the road a little bit. They have a cottage, I guess you'd call it down there. Nice little place. Uh, they come out on the weekends, but they are building their retirement home up behind that. And really nice people. I got to meet them a couple times. And it'll actually be kind of nice having a few more people around uh, because the parcels down here are so big. Everybody's kind of uh, spread way out, and uh, but it'll be good to have someone else to kind of help keep their eye on the place. I know most of the other neighbors down here are really nice people. I actually probably know more of my neighbors down here than I do at home. And I think the reason is the road that we live on isn't a road where you can like go for a walk on. I mean, you could if you had a death wish, but it's a real windy road. People go fast. So you know the people that have been there for years, our immediate neighbors we're friends with, I know real well. But if you go a half mile down the road, I don't know those people. Down here, I do. But anyway, enough talk. I'm going to get my tools out and uh, get started putting some tongue and groove up. And I'll report back in a bit. So I've got about 10 or 12 batteries for all my DeWalt stuff. I need to charge a few of them up. Uh, but I got two of them on charge and a battery for the trail camera. It's putting out about 135 watts of output. And it would do that for 11 and a half hours. And the DeWalt's only take about a half hour to charge. So this has plenty of capability for uh, what I'm doing here. Plus, I have another additional battery that'll fit on top of that Jackery. I don't even bring it down. Once we get this finished, uh, I'll probably do that. The plan is we're going to run the shower house on one battery bank or my little Honda generator and the cabin on another battery. And, you know, using the LED lighting, it won't. You could probably stay down here four or five days. And plus... If you need to, you can plug it into the generator for a little bit or into the back of the truck if you head to town. But I think that's the direction we're going to go. So I was going to bring my uh, table saw down, but I'll bring it next time. This works okay for ripping these small pieces. And plus, I have a little bit of uh, wiggle room. Anyway, I'll show you that in a minute. But normally what I do with the table saw is I will rip 
this piece off right here, just that part of the groove, and then stick it up on the wall, you know, where it meets the ceiling, and just face nail it. But here, I'm just leaving myself a little bit of extra room so I can put it in this way and snap it into place. Because where that little eighth of an inch gap is, or whatever it is, is going to be covered by the ceiling, and then I'm going to have a piece of trim go across it anyway. There's a 2x4 in here on this side and on the other side. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe, maybe just to stiffen things up when they transport it. There's a lot of nails in it. I was thinking of taking it down, but I'm going to leave it. And when I'm done, I'll put another one across here, and I will box all that in with some nice trim and I think it'll make a nice uh, I think it'll look good plus I need to extend it that way and then that'll be a nice break from downstairs to upstairs when you go up the steps so I'm gonna leave that there all right I need to take a little break from the tongue and groove uh, we have a little mission to go on right now I'm telling you it is late afternoon and uh, Boy, the sun goes out pretty quick in these pines. Probably before dark, I may run into town, get something to eat, and then I may continue to work on this into the evening some, and uh, I'll probably go to bed a little bit after sun goes down. gonna get a few apples uh, this apple tree right here this is on our property uh, there's a power line right here and our property lines down there about another 50 feet or so but you can see they've gotten everything they can reach so I'm gonna get a bag full here not many and just take them up there by that one trail camera back in the woods do you notice this year I don't know where you live but apples, like the acorns are ginormous, chestnuts, everything, uh, kind of like a bumper crop this year of everything, which is kind of surprising because it's been so dry. Let's put a few out here for tonight. I got a camera right over here. I think before it gets too dark, uh, we're going to take the four-wheeler to town 
and might get a little Subway sandwich. I'm not sure how far it is. Maybe we'll, uh, if I can figure out the trip thing on this, we'll see how far it is. That is a long way to get a Subway sandwich. There's a deer over there, not even, probably 30 yards. I can't tell what it is. And I'm freezing, to tell you the truth. There's a couple of them over there. They just do not care. Tell you what, I am going to need to get the wood stove installed very soon. We're going to get a little heat outside here, at least for now. Got a nice little fire going here. Boy, that feels good, actually. I want to show you something uh, before it gets too dark. All right, it is now 7.16. Got a little bit of daylight left, but I am preparing for darkness. Check out this little uh, DeWalt light right here. It's got a hook on it, it's got a clip on it, and I got plenty of the 20 volt VMAX batteries. I think what I'm gonna do is probably work for maybe another hour, and then uh, hopefully get a good night's sleep. If I don't, it won't be because it's not quiet here. It is like total silence. Then in the morning, I'll put some more tongue and groove up. And then I'm going to get on the mini skid. I want to mow some more trails and mow down some more of that invasive stuff. Then I'll come back, 
put up some more tongue and groove. I have to go back tomorrow night. And then uh, probably first to next week, I'll be able to come down for a couple more days. I got quite a bit done today. I'll show you in the morning. It's pretty dark in there right now. But I'm definitely going to need a wood stove soon, like I said. Uh, the cabin is insulated very well. But what I have noticed is not only does it keep the cold out, it also keeps the heat out. In other words, like today, probably got up to about 70 degrees and it never warmed up in that cabin at all. So we definitely need a heat source. Uh, I've got it all lined up. I just haven't uh, had a chance to get it down here and coordinate everything. But it's going to be a little Regency stove. Uh, you'll be able to heat this cabin with a candle. I mean, it's insulated well. It's not very big. But it's going to be a small little Regency. But it still takes... I think 18 inch firewood. I cut everything 16 inches. So it should be a nice little stove, but uh, I'm excited seeing a little progress here. I know it's been taking a long time. I always get comments about that. What about the concrete in the pavilion? What about this? What about that? You know, everything we do, I've mentioned this before. It may seem like you're not getting everything done that you'd like to. And I feel that way all the time, but all you got to do is look back like a month or six months or a year and you see everything that has been accomplished in that amount of time and it's a good way to keep your sanity because as long as you're moving forward and you're not getting excited and screwing things up uh you're making progress and be honest with you this cabin the best thing that ever could have happened was for me to scrap the idea of putting up the rough cut on the inside i mean it would have looked nice but this tongue and groove is so much nicer. And had I just rushed and fired it up, yeah, it'd look all right. But it's going to look so much nicer when it's done. Really excited about it. But anyway, I think we'll wrap this video up. It's going to be too dark to really film anything. And I noticed with these types of lights and the big one I have inside, it makes the camera all wonky. So we're going to wrap this up. And I'll probably just start another video tomorrow if I'm doing some mowing and uh we'll see what we get into but anyway i appreciate y'all being here i really do and i will catch you on the next one